This is day number 24 of the 30 Day Solo Podcast Challenge. I'm David Hooper from BigPodcast.com, and here's my job today and every day. It's to help you grow a big audience for your message. And the way I'm doing that, the way we're doing that together, is via your podcast. This series of episodes is going to help you clarify your message, improve your delivery, make more money, give you more flexibility with your podcast, and build skills that will translate elsewhere. I'm talking about speaking, emails, blog posts, communication you have with your loved ones and friends. The skills that you develop during these 30 days, they will give you the foundation for more than just podcasting. Because this is bigger than podcasting. This is about spreading your message through any means available to you. If you haven't done this already, listen to the intro episode first. This explains the what and the why of everything happening here. To get that intro episode, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Previously, yesterday, we talked about the crystal ball. If you want to be seen as an expert, you need to know where things are headed. So where are they headed? What do you see for the future? On this episode, today's focus, got something kind of related to that. I want to talk about the past. And here's the question for you. What's a mistake, something related to your podcast that you've made? Here's why this is important. Nothing is flawless. A lot of your listeners, they don't understand that what they are hearing is a highly edited podcast. You've thought about what you're going to say. You've gotten in the studio and you said it. And then you're editing that message to make it perfect. Sometimes when we talk about the past, there's revisionism. You hear those stories about a guy who built a company. It was so easy. He knew exactly when to sell. Now he's a millionaire. They say that women forget the pain of childbirth. And I think as entrepreneurs, business owners, people with a message, sometimes we forget the pain that it took for us to get where we are. And by letting people in, showing them that nothing is flawless, we let them know that one, we're real, and two, We understand where they are. Throughout this series, I've talked about rapport and connection. You're trying to build that. And that's one of the reasons that you want to answer this question. What is a mistake, something related to your podcast, that you have made? Quick side note here, speaking of revisionism. You see a lot of hosts that love to talk about what I call failure porn. They love to dive deep in their screw-ups and how they really made a lot of mistakes. The problem is that those mistakes, if you want to call them that, are often what propelled that person to be where he is. An example of that, the ex-porn star who's speaking at church. That person would not be on that platform had it not been for those mistakes. I used to see something similar when I was in the music industry. I deal with a lot of people. They want to talk about the good old days, back when they were shooting up heroin, doing cocaine, having orgies. And publicly, they can't seem to move on from that, even though privately, in their personal lives, they've moved on from it a long time ago. The reason for that is because nobody's paying attention to their new stuff. Nobody cares. People want that stimulation, that titillation of something illicit, something that could have gone horribly wrong, and maybe it did, it almost got there, and then it didn't. A last-minute stay of execution. You found Jesus, cleaned up, did whatever. So be aware of that. We talked yesterday about predictions, moving forward, seeing where things are going. Don't stay in the past just because it's going to get you a little attention. These things that you're talking about, these mistakes, they're not failures. And they're good things that have come from them. So focus on those good things as well as the mistake when you tell this story. Let me give you an example. At one time, I had a huge mailing list. I thought it was huge, about 80,000 people. When social media started to gain traction... I started to ignore that list. Talking about the future, I said, the future is in social media. We don't need to go through email anymore. Email's dying out. We'll just go through Twitter, podcasting, Facebook, whatever. And I ignored the list, and eventually that list died. It's what we call going cold. It's like that old friend you stopped hearing from. When you do hear from him, he tries to pick that thing up, and you've moved on. That's how a mailing list is. And on the flip side of that, the real life side of that, not the stuff that I was doing on the internet, I also started to neglect many of my business and personal connections. The reason I think I did that, which is also social media, is because I think social media gives us a very nice facade of knowing what is happening in people's lives, but we're doing it from a distance. You can look at something on Facebook, click like, and you can say, oh, that's nice, without really getting involved. 
Think about that. You see these messages on Facebook. Hey, I'm getting a divorce. Oh, sad face. Hey, I've got two months to live. Sad face. You don't really get involved. Is that a relationship? Not really. But we feel that it is. We feel that we're doing something by clicking like, dislike, angry face, sad face. And it sneaks up on you. One day you've got a list of 80,000 people. The next day, gone cold. And here's another thing I want you to think about. Imagine going to your high school reunion now compared to what that would have been like 30 years ago. There's no longer a surprise. You don't see that person. She says, oh yeah, I'm getting a divorce. You're like, yeah, I saw it on Facebook. Hit that sad face. (laughs) And that's the downside. There's not that deep connection that you could get from actually having kept in touch with people or from actually having those type of connections. I've missed a ton of opportunities because I haven't kept in touch with people. And those people, and I'm going to take full responsibility for this, because I haven't kept in touch with them, and because we don't have this deep connection, I can't offer opportunities to them. My friends in the music industry, my friends in the radio business, I've got stuff coming up all the time that would be great opportunities for these guys. But I just don't have those kind of relationships anymore. I mean, I'm not saying all my relationships are gone, but I don't have as many as I once did because I outsourced things to social media. And I got busy. There's a million reasons for this. That's why what I'm doing now is I'm recommitting to reaching out to more people, both via my mailing list and also personally. And I'm not just talking about spamming people via the mailing list, by the way. I'm talking about actually building and maintaining real connections, as real as those connections can be, via email. And many of those... I'm taking off of email. I'm taking off of the internet. I'm actually doing a lot more phone calls, a lot of in-person meetings now. I've opened up my schedule. I'm putting time on the calendar to get on the phone every week. And also, as far as in-person meetings, I'm doing those more frequently as well. I can't do them every week because they do take more time. They do take more planning. But I'm doing these things several times a month to get nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes with people that I want to keep in touch with and have those kind of relationships with. By the way, if you want to see what I'm doing with this mailing list, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That gets you hooked up. It's a low volume, maybe three or four times per month email with information that I hope you will find helpful. This is podcasting information. This is marketing information. It's the same type of thing that I'm talking about here, how to grow an audience, how to get people connected to your message, and how to make it So those people spread your message for you so that they do your marketing for you. Here's your action step for today. Get a piece of paper, get a pen, outline your episode with the three elements of a great episode, the beginning, the middle, the end, the intro. That's the beginning. That's when you work people up to what you're talking about. Let them know why it's important, why they should listen. Ease them into it. Don't just hit them over the head with some information. Remember, facts tell, stories sell. You want to get people invested in your message by telling stories. Those stories, that is the meat. That's where you're answering the question. What is a mistake? Again, something related to your podcast that you've made. And the final part, that's where you wrap things up. That's how you've changed the cause of that mistake. And if you've got an action step, that is where you put that. For the closing of the story that I told you, I mentioned building this mailing list. And for the action step attached to it, I'll let you know where to get that mailing list. Don't overthink this. Keep the outline short and tight. I recommend three to five minutes. Hit record. Go for it. Work from those bullet points. It does not have to be perfect. We're doing exercises here. I'm helping you to build these skills so when you need to do it within your podcast, incorporate it as part of what you've already got going on. You're going to be ready for it. Upload this segment. If you want to send it to me, bigpodcast.com is the best way to do that. That is it for today. And right now, before you start outlining, start recording this episode, do this. Take advantage of that action step. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. You can do two things there. First of all, you can subscribe to this podcast. Make sure you don't miss an episode. Make sure you get all 30 days of this because this is a process. I'm taking you through something step by step, day one through day 30, with the goal of you having a more powerful solo podcast, something that people will be attracted to and something that people will really connect with and subscribe to. That's at bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Subscribe to the podcast. And while you are there, get on that mailing list. When you do, I will give you my free podcast toolkit, episode templates, social media templates, 
things that will help make your podcast process so much easier. I've got a process for dealing with guests, questions to ask guests ahead of time to make sure that you've got a great guest interview. You don't run into technical problems. You don't run into issues when they say, uh, could you go back and edit this? Uh, could you take this down? That's not going to be a problem for you when you've got my guest form and this agreement that your guests are going to agree to before they come on your podcast. Everything is there at bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. It is free to you as my thanks for being a listener to Big Podcast and the 30 Day Solo Podcast Challenge. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow on the next episode.